Welcome to the Cloud Pod, where the forecast is always cloudy. We talk weekly about all things AWS, GCP, and Azure. We are your hosts, Justin, Jonathan, Ryan, and Matthew. Episode 237, uh, recorded the week before Thanksgiving. Clean your crystal balls. It's time for your AWS wish list and predictions. Good evening, Ryan, Jonathan, and Matt. Hey, Justin. I'm polishing my balls right now. <laughs> that you are. <laughs> very, very, very British of you. <laughs> Very, very British of you. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, it's been too long of a week that that wasn't even yeah. that funny. Yeah. <laughs> this is why he this is why he has paid the big bucks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just so much better with the accent too. Like it does. It, it does. Makes it has it a, exponentially better. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a shame we don't <laughs> televise like the recording of these things, so you guys can you guys don't get the to witness Jonathan polishing his balls. <laughs> Uh, well, we're here uh, for predictions uh, for reInvent, which is uh, right after Thanksgiving next week. Uh, and uh, I don't know about you guys, but it was a tough, tough time for me. Partially because I'm not in the AWS ecosystem quite as closely as I used to be. So I don't have as many uh, spider tingles when I'm talking to product managers over there about what might be coming. Uh, as well as I don't know enough about AI to really predict a lot of things, but uh, I did come up with some things. How about you guys? How was your, uh, your attempts at coming up with the predictions? I got one good one, I think. And and one not so good one, um, and that's about it, really. But yeah, it's, well, it's we're hard. Come not, up with three, so good luck to you. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll pull something out of, out of uh, thin air. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard, like not working with AWS every day anymore. But also just the, the the mass amount of AI news that there is, it kind of drowns out everything else. I find it hard to kind of keep track of other progress and other things. Yeah, I feel like everything's kind of gone incremental updates and all focus has shifted to AI everywhere. And if it doesn't have AI, ML, LLMs, insert any other AI-based acronyms in here, it's just like, okay, we're not doing this anymore. I think Code Catalyst was my last like wish list item that I was like, you know, this is really what Amazon needs to provide as a service. And then after that, I, like, I don't think I have any more items on the list. Like there's stuff that I could, you know, It'd be nice if they improved it, but as far as like big product ass, I got kind of got nothing. So yeah, it's been a struggle. Yeah. Well, we'll see, how, we'll see how bad our predictions are, and then what they actually will uh, announce, and then we'll we'll recap and laugh at ourselves about how silly we all were. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, prior to the show, uh, Jonathan and I and uh, Brian and Matt all rolled. Jonathan and I tied. Then we had to have a roll off. That was uh, fun with his balls. And so uh, he <laughs> ended up winning. So Jonathan has the first uh, prediction of the show, uh, followed by myself, and then Ryan, and then Matt uh, picked up the fourth spot, which is very Peter of you, Matt. So well done. Indeed. I, I had to try. It just yeah. means I have an excuse because you guys immediately stole everything, even though we haven't even started yet. Yeah. <laughs> that's, just that's throw it out there that that's the reason why. That's the reason why. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you haven't heard what we've got to say yet, so you may not want to. doesn't wanna, matter. You you've immediately wanna. stolen mine. <laughs> I've already told you you've stolen my Jonathan. Your good one or your bad one to have stolen mine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, Jonathan, that puts you on the clock then for your first AWS prediction. Okay, my first and best prediction is... GPU support for Lambda functions. Does not exist. Does not, does not exist. Hmm. Interesting. I not think bad. as many use cases, oh, AI, um, <laughs> but, no but just, way. just in general, I, th- I, th- I think um, there's a huge use case for um, running uh, Qt code or something on, uh, on Lambda on demand. Uh, Lambda Labs is what I was thinking of. They, they, they provide Lambda like GPUs. A different company than AWS. Yep. All right. Well, that's uh, that's interesting. And not a bad guess, actually. Now you say it, and I didn't realize it wasn't a thing. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. Could be compelling. All right. Well, then I'm going to go for my first one, uh, which is what list. Uh, I'm going to expect a new type of graviton slash ARM based chip targeted specifically at AI, or just a new graviton chip with AI smarts built into it. Eh. Of course. <laughs> They only just released the Inferentia 2 this year, didn't they? Uh, back in June Yeah, that's still, still pretty general, you know, inference-related. I feel this is more of a, something more specific. So okay. okay. I could be wrong. But, you know, it might just be a new grab. Well, I mean, I, that'll be the interesting when we argue about whether yeah, you get the point later. later yeah. you know, cause, you know, just because they said you know new chip and AI in the same sentence, which they will, but chances are they're going to say AI every four words. So Yeah. All right, Ryan? I am going to go... 
with another Lambda feature. I believe that AppMesh, well, kind of, AppMesh is going to support serverless workloads. Ooh, interesting. I like it. I mean, you guys, you guys said these were bad choices. I, you guys done well. You haven't heard mine yet. That's true. Well, I, that's why I said it before <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <went. laughs> I, I, I see right. these things as more like what we actually want rather than predictions. <laughs> that's, why I said, that's why I did say it's the wish list slash yeah. prediction show. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it is a bit of a wish list. This is why we never win. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> if they deliver what we actually wanted, we'd be ecstatic. Yeah. They do eventually. Eventually. Yeah. yeah. After years of us giving up hope. Mm-hmm. All right, Matt, let's hear it. Let's hear your first. I'm going to say that there's going to be a chat feature in AWS config. So you can directly say, hey, give me all my public IP addresses in all my AWS accounts. Tell me all my security groups with port 22 open to 000. I mean, so kind of, so, but more in like a chat based feature of it. So do you really want to limit yourself to config? Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. I was going <laughs> to. Okay, we can expand it out to. I'm gonna, I, I do want to put some limits on it so it's not like they're integrating a chat based feature because that feels rude. But let's say, like, in in the AWS security tooling, like specifically focus on the security world. I, I would give I would give you this if they if they, gave, if they gave me the ability to ask a chat bot inside of the AWS console any question about my AWS resources, I would give this to you. I mean, I was originally gonna go that, but I thought that was I, too I, general. I don't think I'll it's too it. broad. I think it's a very specific feature. I, it's Excellent I don't think pick. they'd limit it. I, I agree. I think they would implement this into the search bar of the Amazon console. Yeah. Great. I'll take it then for yeah. anything. I was using the config <laughs> yeah. as an example, but my original my notes are about security. So there was you a know, so. there was a show topic that I killed for 236. So they actually enabled um, your ability to do resource center searches across mm-hmm. your organization. So it was a it was a, a new story we didn't cover it in the main show uh, that we recorded before this, but um, I thought that was sort of interesting, but I didn't think about it from the expansion of like, well, you need to enable that to then be able to give you cross organizational AI chatbots that can tell you where every any resources in any account. So I think you might be onto something here, man. Like being able I'll to ask it. a general question to the AWS console, you might get this one. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm mad now that I didn't come up with this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that, Jonathan. That's... Oops, sorry, go ahead, Matt. You can finish here. No, that was it. I, I I wanted to go general, but I thought that was too general. So I mean, I, I, I think I, I think if you were like they're gonna do, they're gonna announce some AI thing for the console, that would be too general. But like a specifically a chat bot feature, I, I I'm okay with it. I literally okay. have a chat integration for console, and so like you know, so Matt, not only did you steal mine, but yeah, Justin would have thrown mine out immediately because it wasn't specific. <laughs> <laughs> He feels bad for the new person that's trying to do this for the first time. <laughs> so he's going to be a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Jonathan, give us your second pick. Well, <laughs> funny you should well, say that. Well, I was going to use that. <laughs> uh, I was going to predict chat integration for the support portal. So it qu- querying um, documentation, uh, best practices, and answering basic support questions. Hmm. Like yeah. not connector or connect, not connector, right? But so this is it, support for Amazon services, not yeah. their support product. Yeah, Amazon customers, AWS customers, use, uh, using the, the the web console to submit tickets, for example. So basically, they, a ticket deflection chatbot that you right. know you can instead yeah. of going to that stupid form, which has never been changed, you could you know just type in free form. I'm having an issue with my EC2 instance where it won't boot. And then that yes. would give you a link to how to fix your system to boot. Or, you know, it would give you additional questions potentially that you could then ask and then give you guidance or do something automatically for you. So there's there's quite a few options of how they could do that. Yep. I don't know if that's cool enough for reInvent stage, but hey, maybe. I don't know. Like this year with AI, everything AI, it's fair mm-hmm. game. So uh, I'm actually more surprised that there isn't more of this, right? Like even the the support options across the all the clouds, like at best you get like a link to some articles that are relevant to your complaint. But what I want is like that chat ops integration where it's like, Hey, I'm noticing this thing. It's like, Oh, let me go reboot that thing for you. It's that's what I want the AI. to do. I don't want AI rebooting surfers. That I feels... Reboot everything. <laughs> Chaos engineering powered by AI. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's it's a just good one. I'm writing everything. <laughs> 
All right, uh, I'm up for my second pick. Uh, I I don't know how you get, none of you guys picked this one because this is my first thing that popped up when I was searching around for LLM and AWS. Uh, they're going to general announce Olympus, and they're going to say it's bigger than OpenAI data set. Is my guess. I don't know what Olympus is other than so a it's camera their branch, it's their so. own custom built LLM like OpenAI or uh, Llama two or any of those things. Oh, wow. <laughs> two trillion parameters. I thought they had. I thought they had uh, something else that was released released with Bedrock, but maybe not. They do, but it, Olympus is uh, not out yet, and it's. Uh, I'm I'm saying it's going to be GA'd, and will be. They're going to make it big, and splashy, and uh, it's my. This is the last time they GA'd all the way an GA? at reInvent. It, they've done it before. Well, it'll be available. I mean, like GA, forever. Okay, available. maybe GA is the wrong. They're going to announce it on stage, and it's going to be for. Uh, a bigger data set than somebody like OpenAI. But is it going to be usable by, is it going to be like Yeah, it'll be usable in Bedrock. Preview? It'll be in Bedrock, that's my guess. So it'll be publicly available. Yes, it'll be publicly available. If they already kind of announced that, but I guess it's not publicly available. I can't wait to argue about this point if you get it. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> 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 All right, Ryan, what's your second pick? Uh, let's see. Um, I my my softball that I'm going for casting a wide net is I believe that so, at some point during one of the keynotes there will be a large sort of explanation of data sovereignty and the global conditions of which that'll become important and they will leverage that into either plans or or their strategy for new regions to empower a data sovereignty response. So we we just talked about European data sovereignty region they're building. Are you here for that episode? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so you think they're going to have something about data sovereignty on stage? What that is, you're not sure. But I'll, I'll, it's fine. Yeah. I'm not going to win that one. You're right. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll let you take. I'll, make, I'll let you take dumb choices. That's fine. I'll do one. Yeah, <laughs> I reckon you'll get the point for that. I reckon you'll get the point for that. We'll see. Yeah, we'll I, see. Will. I forgot about the European thing, and I, I think I was actually. I think I was last week. I mean, it's been a long week since that recording, but I'm pretty sure that was last week, and you were here. So, all right, Matt, uh, was your I second last pick. week. No, I don't think you were. <laughs> oh. Uh. I may go with something outside this world a little bit and go with there's going to be something about carbon emissions and green technology talked about during the keynotes. You know, whether it's, hey, with the new processors, we've you know been able to reduce carbon emissions in the same data centers or something along those lines with carbon emissions, especially, you know, given everything happening in the world. This will be fun to argue with you later because they're going to say something. You're going to be like, that's it. And I'm like, no, you, you said carbon emissions and green technology, but I'll, I'll take it. They've also <laughs> sort of already done this like one or two reinvents ago. So I wonder. I mean, that doesn't mean that it doesn't mean they're not going to say it again. It so, it, you know, you it's can take true. the easy points. I mean, it's very Peter again. Yeah, they released the dashboard and other stuff, but <laughs> I, I was trying to figure out how to make it more specific and I couldn't figure out a way to do that. So. We just argue about that too, so yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I know I started off with very specific, and I was told, "Don't be so specific." Well, so I, I, think that, I mean, the chatbot general. thing was like you—you you called it a specific feature. Like I, I, that's why I gave that one too. But yeah, again, words matter. Mm-hmm. So, all right, Jonathan, how words about, are hard, and words are hard. Uh, oh, by the way, this is this would be a good reminder for you guys should probably show up to the recordings before predictions. That way, you know what was announced the last few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> for Ryan's day, sorry. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> that means Ryan has to watch them, though, yeah. too. That's true. Yeah. Oh, God. All right, Jonathan, your third pick. <sighs> I'm on the fence between two. So you came into the recording with two total. I'm glad you're coming to the third. That <laughs> <laughs> you're now split between a third well, and a fourth. One I've used before, which was the Amazon Web Services running their own chip fab somewhere, which I think mm, yes, still I makes this. So it makes total sense given their scale and the challenges in Taiwan and China. Well, the other one's kind of a, I don't know, I I feel dirty winning it because it's just like, it's so easy. (laughs) (sighs) I want you to do that one just in case you don't. We're going to put AWS on a slide. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I think, okay, I'll go with the easy one. I think... There will be a new bare metal instance with 
more GPUs for AI training, specifically bare metal instance. So, I actually had that on my list. <laughs> have you been waiting months and months to hire your new AWS GCP Azure architect, only to have them be poached at the eleventh hour by a startup with a juice bar? Initiative stalled because you're having trouble hiring. Well, I have a simple solution: Falcon Consulting. Falcon Consulting provides top-notch cloud engineers to the world's most innovative companies and can be burning down your DevOps and cloud backlogs as soon as next week. Falcon certified AWS, GCP, and Azure professionals are armed with infrastructure as code and from day one will be designing performant, optimized cloud-native or hybrid environments that deliver on the promise of cloud. Their FogOps solution even provides on-demand cloud engineering to augment your existing teams. Visit www.foghornconsulting.com or send an email to cloudtalentnow at foghornconsulting.com and tell them the CloudPod sent you. Your dedicated FogOps team is with you for the long haul, and they bring their own juice. Uh, well, this is supposed to be my third pick. Uh, and I'm going to go with one I've used actually in the past, <laughs> mostly because I feel like it was going to happen. This is Adam Slinsky's year to deliver me major improvements to QuickSight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> To make it more Tableau-ish. Because like you came from there, you know what a good product looks like. You can't look at that product and say, that's a good product. I I expect AI built into it that makes me pretty reports. I Anything major improvement on the main stage for QuickSight as an AI might be the way to get it there. But I'll, I'm going to take it. It's my, my choice. I like it. I, I think it's a good choice. And I, I really want them to actually do that, though. Mm-hmm. And then if it well, doesn't happen, like I then I know Adam Slipsky absolutely fucking hated working at Tableau and he never wants to talk about reporting ever again. So that's, <laughs> it's going to go one of the two ways and I'll never talk about this again. That's, Either that or making a BI tool is just way harder than we think. And, and that's possibly. There's no, tr- there's nothing transferable between the two products. But it does seem like with QuickSight, like they, they do already and have for a while do like automated, uh, uh, like in sort of. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on the word, like automated re- responses to your data. Not That's not right. But automated insights, Jesus. I mean, you couldn't remember the name of an Amazon product? I'm shocked. Shocked. I know. I know. <laughs> they're they're named so well. They're named so yeah. well. I mean, the, but then you get to GCP and they're like so on the nose that you're like, it can't be that simple. No, no, it is. That's good. It is. Uh, Ryan, you're up for your third pick. All right. Well, this is where... Um, it turns into more of a permissions or a, a wish list item also, but also bottom of the barrel, because I don't think this is going to come at all. But, uh, what I'm hoping for is some sort of, I am just in time permissions. That's gen that's powered by generative AI. That would be cool. Mm-hmm. I was just say for adding I, permissions. You just know, in like, time? So it, what would be cool is that it's like, figuring out what is appropriate permissions for what you're trying to do and generating a response based on that. Hmm. Your wish list is good. I like that one. I'll take like real time policy generation. Mm-hmm. You, you tell it what you're trying to do and it gives you the permissions to do the things that you're asking to do rather than giving it the specific. Yeah. Rather items. than providing a list of You go to that chat and be like, hey, I need to, I need to be able to create a service that talks to RDS and it generates mm-hmm. a policy. That'd be awesome. Didn't um, somebody I thought created a tool? I want to say it was Ian, who's been on the podcast before, where you essentially proxy and it tells you what the permission sets are at the commands that you're going to run. Yeah. No, that, yeah. So you want. So this would be more along the lines of the the inputs, right? And so instead of monitoring the actual API calls and generating your policy, where you have to have the permissions in advance and then pare it down. This would be in in normal language describing what you're trying to do and it and produce a policy. So I need I want to manage EC2, you know, in this environment, but not and only have access to, you know, restart certain servers by tag or something. You know, like that kind of thing. You would just say that and then it would generate the policy based on that. Yeah, it's been a it's been a while since Ian's been on. We should ask Ian to come back because he's mm-hmm. he's released some new stuff too. Like I am live, he did that generates I am policies by monitoring, uh, you know, basically what's happening for AWS Azure and Google Cloud. He's also built I am fast, which actually generates the I am policy from your application codes. Like he's got some cool stuff these days. Mm-hmm. So we should get him back on. Uh, if he's out there, yeah. reach out to me, Ian, or I'll reach out to you. 
but uh, it's I was just looking at his blog. He hasn't been on since 2020. So we're overdue to have Ian McKay join us again. So. A lifetime ago. Yeah, I know. A hundred years. I feel bad now. <laughs> we've, been, we've been pretty bad about guests actually lately. We've been too busy. <laughs> so it's just hard enough to coordinate between us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, Matt, give us your third and final pick. So this was actually talking with uh, one of my friends um, and some sort of predictive typing. Think like GitHub Copilot, you know, where like it automatically fills it out, but integrated in with like AWS shell slash cloud nine, like one of the tools. Um, so like, you know, it predictively like will help you generate the CLI commands, you know, kind of like a fuzzy setup, like for bash, but like integrated in with everything. So code whisperer, but integrated into what? like the actual developer tools. So like the the AWS developer tools, like that suite, you know, think, thinking like AWS shell, AWS cloud nine. I think those were like the two couple ones that I. Yeah. AWS shell was the one that I remembered, uh, which I just looked at, I just pulled up the code for that and hasn't been updated in years. So I don't know if that's still even an active project, but yeah, it was auto completion of AWS, uh, basically. CLI commands and you could basically get documentation right there in the GUI and all that or right from the GUI and CLI that you're using. It was pretty nice. I use it a lot. Um, but I honestly yeah. haven't used it recently. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'd be good to see that come back or you know, somewhere else as well. So it's talking like a yeah, clip, some- like a clippy thing that pops up and says, Hey, it looks like you're trying to exfiltrate data. Or, yes. or like <laughs> <laughs> Yes, just like that. Yeah. No, perfect. I was even saying like help you finish yeah. the commits. <laughs> do we get honorable mentions? Because like if they if they do, if they develop that, you get the point. I was just saying, if Clippy is integrated anywhere, yeah. I think Jonathan Woods. <laughs> uh, a reinvent, uh, you know, uh, pr- announcement of Clippy. Just totally seeing Microsoft's thunder. Announcement of Clippy. I'm putting the honor mentions because <laughs> if it happens, I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, all right. And then tiebreaker. So typically we do a number of announcements on main stage. Um, but we were thinking maybe we should do how many times AI was mentioned. That was Matthew's idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I might lose count though. So I was going to say, like, <laughs> that's the only problem is that we'll you can't count that. High. So if someone, if someone puts like a hundred on here, I'm going to hate you. So like you know, keep the number low. So I, I don't know. I want to hit the number. I can stop counting. <laughs> Like, I don't want to. Is this price and right? Yeah, no, it's price and right. Over. So it's Jonathan right. gets to go last, and he's just going to do one dollar. You know, he is. yeah. That's because that's the problem. Is the, that is the thing? <laughs> it is the opposite order of how we just drafted. So uh, you are technically <laughs> first for the number of AI. Damn it. So, is the AI announcement or just the number of time they reference AI? The number of times or they say AI? AI. I'm not going to count ML. So just AI. <laughs> well, AI just or AI. artificial intelligence. I think we should accept both. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. We're wow, we're really getting detailed, guys. Intelligence. This is. It's all just yeah. trying to to set enough fodder for the argument later. Yeah. 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 In all the keynotes. Yes. In all the keynotes. Yeah. Uh, Matt, Ryan, I hope they have transcripts. I don't want to go first. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, that's how it works. You came up with the, you yeah. came up with this thing, and now you're here. We are. Well, that was because I was listening to the co-pilot <laughs> one, where I just like couldn't. My brain was dying at how many times they said co-pilot it's, in the middle of the Azure keynote. Yeah, I know. Someone was like, "You should watch the GitHub Universe keynote," and I was like, "Sure, I'll watch it." And I was watching. I was like, "If I hear Copilot one more time," <laughs> <laughs> I was talking with a coworker. I was like, "I can't hear. I can't take it anymore." The word "copilot's" used too often. It's like every third word. Yeah. All right, Matt. You gotta get a number. I'm trying to make a number not too high that Justin hates me, but high enough. <laughs> You can, go with, you can go with whatever number you would like. I, I won't hate you that much. I, mean, I might just pipe them through a, through a transcript thing so I can just count them that way. <laughs> I, I think it's the only way we're going to uh, that's Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go with 72. Okay. 72. Less than 100, you know, in the, in, the, in the margin here. Sure. Okay. Ryan? So I'm reading an article from CNET where Google said AI over 140 times in its two-hour uh, Google I.O. conference. Mm-hmm. So by using that math, I'm going to go 563. <laughs> I thought we had to keep it low. <laughs> yeah, but we just said we're going to use we're going to use AI. He to said he would hurt me if it was over 100. And yeah, then I, I, I said, "Hold 100. my beer." Yeah. <laughs> 
but then also if it, if it stops right. at 130 and he does like then you know it's fine yeah so yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, I gotta. See, I was gonna. I now understand the rules for next year. Yeah. Well, I mean, but you might. You're <laughs> in a good spot right now because right now at this moment you're between 72 and 562. You would get it correct. Uh, but although I'm gonna fuck you up here in a second, so it's fine. But 100. <laughs> uh, so I was gonna go 42, but then like hearing Ryan saying I'm gonna go 142. Nice. <laughs> Uh, because you know, 42 is the mystery of life in the universe, mm-hmm. so that's uh, that's appropriate. But mm-hmm. uh, I'll just add 100 to that, so 142 would be my guess because I have no no idea. And then Jonathan, last but not least, are you going with one? Nope, <laughs> I'm going with I'm going with 90. 90. All right. Ooh. So that trunk mat down to 72 to 89. So see, that's how this works. You gotta, gotta work it out. That's so I want to go with a couple hundred at the beginning, but then you know. All right. All right. So uh, now we talk about the things that we didn't pick. So I had a list of eight things. I only use three. So I have five that are left. Uh, so I can talk about those as my honorable mentions here. Uh, but John, I think, Jonathan, you said you had one you were thinking about too. So maybe you go first. See if you take one of mine off the list. Uh, no, I think I mentioned all, all mine in the end. I think it was the, uh, the chip one and the AI integration for the support the services. One. The chip manufacturing. The chip That's right. Yeah. The chip fab. Yeah. I mean, who who did they came up with the clippy idea? Was that Matt? That was I guess that was me. I, 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 yeah, I, I guess um, you know a, a new face for AWS would be a a good one. A new face for AWS. Yeah, like a you know, clippy was a face at Microsoft Office. Oh, I guess I, I guess a um. A, be, wait, is there gonna be is there gonna be a, an icon for AWS Workmail? It is. It's a, <laughs> isn't it a green email envelope? Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I meant a animated figure. Got it. Sorry. All right, Ryan, did you have any honorable mentions or you want to mention or anything you thought was just crazy you didn't want to put on, on your official predictions? Uh, I think that they're going to take that silly robot thing and the Amazon Alexa thing and make like an actual Jetsons made robot. You're talking about the Astro thing? Isn't isn't Alexa already built into Astro? I have no idea. I don't have one. <laughs> I thought <laughs> cool. I thought you were going to go with like Robot Wars, like they were going to. Do. Oh, <laughs> that's even better. I'd pay for that. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I'll even give that one to you. <laughs> <laughs> Astrobot Deathmatch. I actually think there'll be. I think there'll be a focus on energy and smart energy usage. So maybe there'll be some kind of extra hardware around shutting things down when they're not being used rather than just leaving them there in the spot pool. I'm not really sure about that, but I think I think there'll, there'll be some more extra effort into um, optimizing energy consumption in the data centers. I bet yeah. Warner, I would guess that Warner has more of the Amazon side than Amazon Web Services, but some of the services that they've announced for their fleet optimization for deliveries and stuff like that. I, I wouldn't be surprised if in that context that's talked about, which would be cool. Uh, so I, mine, uh, I, I think, I have two. Oh, you have two, Matt, go ahead. Sorry. I have two. I'll give you one. One of them I had was actually kind of almost the inverse of Ryan's where he was predicting it kind of tell you what the rules were, but essentially to, either send you some sort of notification like, hey, your permissions are too open. So kind of take the IM role analyzer tool, but like to the next level where it tells you, hey, you have these permissions, please remove these ones, they're not needed. And or some sort of like automated way to reduce it. Like it was going to automatically just like just in time, like, hey, we're going to remove remove these permissions because we haven't used them in the last six months. So, okay. So you think AWS is going to copy Azure's terrible feature that you love. Yeah, and I love it. I just think and Ryan thinks just security time, so. people happy. Cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, you said you're two. I don't want to shortchange. No, here. I'll let you go for the next one. We'll round and round. Okay, fine. So my first one is uh, I kind of expect them to make a big splash with AI for security, and so I was expecting a security guard duty sock AI capability. That was mine. <laughs> Literally, AI security tools. What my notes say. <laughs> so it's a little, it's a little clippy icon that shows up. It's like you're being exculpated. Yeah, your yeah. data's being stolen. <laughs> yeah. you, you're being ransomware. Uh, so Would that you was, like uh, help with that? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to know you now or later? <laughs> 
All right, Matt, what was your second? Was that was that was the second one? That, that, was that literally was it. AI, AI, security, awesome. AI security tooling is literally what my notes say. Uh, well, that's fair. Um, uh, the next one I had was um, they've introduced a new database like DuckDB or something just because why not? <laughs> it's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then I had um, an AI module for open search because, you know, you got to stick it to Elasticsearch a little bit. And oh, then, God, if they did shard, you know. Shard <laughs> balancing, that'd be awesome. Shard balancing with AI, that'd be fantastic. Uh, and then my my last honorable mention, uh, I suspect that the Warner Masterclass this year will be an AI. And Warner will be explaining to us how Amazon has been on an AI journey for a decade or more. Uh, mm-hmm. And will be detailing in ad nauseum the entire AI journey, which has now brought them to the Olympus announcement and Bedrock, uh, because that will help uh, shut up the haters who say Amazon is way behind on AI. Uh, uh, does paint a pretty picture. Yeah. So that's what I, that's what I expect to Warner's keynote on Thursday will be is going to be about Amazon's AI journey and how much they've done and what they're doing. And then that'll, that may culminate in the announcement of the largest gravita, you know, Olympus, uh, LM or whatever, but uh, we'll see. That's my, that's my prediction. So I, I feel, I think we're actually pretty good for how much we, we belittled ourselves before we gave our predictions. I think there's some good guesses in here. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. You know, I, th- I think there's a lot of focus on the digital twin stuff last year and the year before, which we didn't really, kind of understand a mm-hmm. lot, you know, we'll see what the use cases were going to be for that. And I know the sports um, video analysis and um, stuff has, has featured a lot in, in reInvent over the past few years too. So I wouldn't be surprised if if there's more um, like focus on the, 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 I can't remember what their simulation world was called, their, their simulation tour was called first like physics sims and stuff. But I don't know companies like Tesla are doing a lot of real world simulations because they don't have enough real data. I'm sure other people building massive AI systems need real world simulations to, to test products and things in. So maybe, um, maybe, maybe some more around the whole simulated uh, environment, simulated world thing, and potentially more digital twins featuring in there as well. All right. To be fair, I still don't understand the the SimSpace Weaver product. I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I appreciate it. I'm, you know, maybe, maybe they could release an Alexa VR headset to use the Sim Sim Weaver. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I overall, I'm pretty pleased with these predictions. So we'll see how we do. Uh, we'll talk uh, after. I guess I mean, we did enough stuff here that impacts Warner. I guess we're gonna have to record on Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> we're hoping not to have to do that, but Thursday's gonna be. Good. Yeah, I think so. All right, because uh, you know, I'm gonna see like data sovereignty or carbon emissions. That'd be a Warner type thing. I could definitely see that. So I think for fairness to all of you, we have to count all three keynotes. So, <laughs> all right, all uh, have a great week. Have a great Thanksgiving. We will see you on the other side of reInvent. And for those of you who are there, good luck to you all because it's going to be right after the F1 race and right before the Super Bowl. So good luck to you all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be noping, enjoying it from my house. Hoping out of that one this year. <laughs> yeah. 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 No so I, was, I was thinking kidding. about going and then someone mentioned the F1 and then the Super Bowl and I was like, oh, no, 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 yeah. not the year no that was that was exactly my thought when you brought up the F1 thing. I'm like, oh, good. I'm not going to even consider that. <laughs> yeah, it's not even on my radar. So. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have a good one, you guys. See you after Thanksgiving. See you. Bye. 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 And that is The Week in Cloud. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Foghorn Consulting. Subscribe on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts and tweet us your feedback at hashtag the cloud pod. Or join our Slack channel, go to our website, thecloudpod.net, for sign-up instructions.